Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel Software Testing. My name is Daniel Knott and I'm happy that you're here today. And today I would like to talk about a really nice topic that is so important for everyone working in the mobile industry, being a mobile developer, mobile product manager or a mobile tester as well. And the topic is how to create a beta testing community for Android. So let's dive right into the topic. Why a beta testing community, you may ask yourself. Why is this so important? Well, let, let's take a look why this is important. A beta testing community provides early access and early feedback to, uh, to new app versions. So whenever you ship an app version to your beta testers, you get really fast feedback on new features that you just implemented, but you're not sure if the features are really well working um, um, across all your users in the, in the apps. So that's really helpful and fast feedback. You can get in, um, insights into terms of stability. Is the app crashing right away? Is the new feature um, behaving exactly how you, you planned it to be? Um, or are the underlying APIs stable and fast enough? Or the backend functionality that was just added to the app or that was just added to your uh, interface? Um, not interface, but to your infrastructure. Um, yeah, well, are there any bugs? Um, bugs that you haven't found and you haven't catched during the testing phase and development phase can be found together with beta testers because they usually have more devices, they are using the app in different environments, in different mobile data networks, so this is a totally different setup where bugs can occur. Of course, you can get feedback in terms of usability. Are there any usability issues inside your app that you may need to fix before you release into the whole user base? Or how is the overall satisfaction of your app? Is it good? Is the perception good? Is the feedback good? And are the users happy with the things that you just implemented? So that's why we did beta testing communities are really important and helpful for mobile development teams. Of course, on the other side, you're increasing also the lo loyalty to your product. So for example, if you ask your beta testers to give specific feedback or you ask them questions like, hey, how do you like the feature that we just implemented? So they feel really heard. So that's really important. Their users feel heard, they feel welcome and they feel, um, they feel needed and they feel important. And this feeling is also really a good thing to um, sharpen and to strengthen uh, your loyalty to your product. And maybe these users will also uh, recommend the, the service or the app to friends, family or to colleagues and you gain even more user base in, in, in your product. So that's with, or just a few reasons why beta testing communities can have a huge impact into your daily activities as a mobile developer or as a tester. And of course, you can release with more confidence, right? So whenever you have a, um, a big amount of beta testers on your app, and you, you release the product to those users you and there's no feedback, no bad feedback at all. There are no crashes, no bugs, no usability flaws. Uh, you can release with, with a much better confidence to your, um, to your remaining user base and it, it maybe also reflects in the, in the feedback that you get or in the App Store reviews. So that's why it's important. So let's take a look how to do it actually uh, on the Android side via the Google Play console and via the Play Store. Um, so testing, there is a testing section in the Google Play console. Um, for those who you have never used uh, the Google Play console, the Google Play console is basically the it's it's a backend service. Um, it, it's a web interface, but it's it's basically the backend of your app that is being published uh, on the Google Play Store. Um, you have a developer access there or your tester access, everyone in the team can get access. And there you have a specific testing section that was introduced some time ago by Google. And I will also make sure that I have all the links in the video description for you to follow up on the testing section and where to find it. So, and with the Google Play Store, you have three options on how to set up a beta testing community. So the option one is it's called internal test. And as the name already suggests, an internal test is something that you can use uh, as an internal service. You can, or like, like an internal testing community, you can set up uh, up to 100 testers or colleagues per app that you would like to distribute the app to. Uh, you can add them via email addresses in the Google Play console. And then you can send them an, email, an invite link via email saying, hey, dear team, dear department or dear company, please go here, download the app and give us some feedback. Yeah? And the setup is pretty much easy. It's really straightforward. 
and the option one is perfect for internal alpha testing. So whenever you push some code to the master branch and a new app gets triggered and gets built, you can directly um, push a new alpha version to, the, um, to these beta testers or to these alpha testers and get some early feedback. And this I would highly recommend to use in your team or within your company department, however you would like to slice the, the test users basically. Um, option two is is a closed um, is a closed test managed by emails or Google Groups. Um, you can set up up to two hundred different lists, uh, and each list can uh, contain up to two thousand testers. So it's like a big portion of, of users that you can invite to your beta testing community. Feedback can be uh, can be delivered from the users via Google Groups or via email. Um, however, there's one drawback on this option. It's like more setup is required because you need not only to find the beta testers who would like to join that uh, beta testing um, program, you need to invite them, you need to send them emails, then they still have to click on the link in the email to get the beta version of the app and so forth and so forth. So there are many, many steps that users can opt out from the process because yeah, users tend to be lazy at some point. They don't want to click more links or go to different pages. Uh, maybe they don't want to go into the Google group, for example, and so forth and so forth. So this option could be a solution, let's say, for, for bigger companies who exceed the 100 uh, year internal testers. So they can use, um, for example, different lists for different departments, and then they can separate those um, users by, by departments, for example, because then the hurdle is much lower because you can invite people saying, hey, please, department marketing, click that link and get gets, give us some feedback on the latest marketing campaigns that we implemented, for example. So that's that's the option for from my point of view. And uh, the third option that you have is basically the real beta testing community. It's called public beta test or open beta test. Um, the cool thing is that you have unlimited numbers of beta testers, so you can open up to everyone, so everyone can, can be there. Uh, it's really easy to access the beta program on the Google Play Store. I have to say it's a little bit hidden, so for those who haven't seen, um, you if you go to, to the Google Play console and you have an app that you would like to test or that you would like to use, you have to scroll down a bit and somewhere in, in below the like I don't know, second or a third um, scrolling point um, of, of the screen, you find a button called beta app or beta testing. And if you tap the button, then you automatically opt into the beta testing um, channel of this app. And then you get an app update and you can get the beta versions of the app. Um, so it's an easy opt in, opt out for users. You don't have to invite users. Of course, you have to make sure that people get know that there is like a beta testing button on your product because it's not coming out of the box, right? So this is really something that you have to go to the Play Console or to the Play Store and activate from your perspective, yeah? Um, the positive thing on this option is that there is no public beta testing rating or reviews available. So the beta testers, they can still use the Google Play Console or the Google Play Store to give feedback. Give the five star, four star, three star ratings and also leave some feedback. But this feedback is not public to everyone. So it's just being visible for you in the team and that's great. However, what I would highly recommend to do is you should add a feedback URL for testers to share information, for example, in the app settings section. So there you can also advertise that your app is supporting the beta testing community. So, or you make some, some marketing um, and interstitials coming up saying, hey, dear users, we have a beta testing app. Uh, you would like to you, you would like to join and then also provide them with some feedback email or um, URL addresses to gather some more feedback and information from the users. Um, this is helpful, of course. It's always helpful to get, to get more details than just it, it doesn't work or a one star rating. And the cool thing about option three, it's really super to set up. It's a couple of clicks. Of course, you have, may have to make sure that you have an, an, a beta app or a new app release version that goes into that funnel. But this is really easy to set up from a Google Play Console point of view. And users can also really easy, uh, easily opt in on that thing. And it's a it's really nice way to, to establish a beta testing community on Android. But there are other ways on how to, um, how to enable a beta testing community for your app. You can use so-called distribution frameworks. And this is especially also in a use case for example, bigger teams or bigger companies. 
that want to use an int internal distribution framework um, to scale their testing activities. So let's assume you have a company with, let's say, 10,000 colleagues or more, and you would like to invite them to a beta testing um, channel or an alpha testing channel, and you don't want to add all the 10,000 email addresses. So you can uh, set up a pipeline uh, with, with tools. So let their tools such as uh, Microsoft App Center, BitRise, TestFlight, well, this is an iOS only product uh, right now, and there are many, but there are many, many more products that can actually act as a distribution framework. And what you can do here is you, of course, you build your app, you test your app, then you upload uh, the, the app to the distribution framework, and any, anyone who, who got um, signed into that, to that email list or to that distribution list gets an automatically an app update saying, hey, there is a new app update available, please download and use it. And that's really cool, and it's uh, really easy to set up as well. Of course, it requires some app add and CI configuration, but as I said, the setup is really straightforward. All the tools out there provide really nice um, tutorials and step-by-step -step, um, situations on how to, to get it started. Um, yeah, it's, it's a bit more work inside the development team, but not too much. What else is on the distribution framework? Um, um, it's not recommended from my point of view for public use unless there is no other option, like for iOS. I'll come to that in an extra video. Um, we'll also talk about iOS beta testing communities. So this is not recommended for public use because it's it's a lot of, it's a big hurdle. So uh, you, it's similar to option one and option two, or similar to option two, I would say, because you need to uh, find the people um, on how to, to to make them or convince them to join the beta testing program. So you have to, have to manually select the users um, that you would like to, to use for the beta testing. And this can be challenging because um, you may have the situation like where to find beta testers and how to convince them to join the program. So that's that's a big hurdle. So I would not rec recommend to use this as, an, as a public service on Android. On iOS, it's a different topic, but um, there's also a little workaround on that. I make sure to, to subscribe to my channel to not miss this, uh, this video on iOS beta testing as well. So this is, this is a drawback from my point of view. Um, bug reporting is a pretty important topic when it comes to beta testing because, I mean, that's the big benefit of having a beta testing community, right? That users can submit bug and report bugs or issues, any kind of issues to your development team. And that's why bug reporting is really important. Um, it should be decoupled from beta testing, but it should be combined. And what I mean with that is that you should also make use of um, tools such as App Center, Firebase, Crashlytics, or any other tools that are available on the market to integrate them um, into your app that you ship to your beta testers, because then you get some detailed insights of crashes. So in case there's an app crash, so it's, let's say it's crashing on App Start, um, these, these tools, they, they log a crash uh, they, they lock the stack trace, they lock the, the device information, the mobile network, for example, and so forth and so forth. And this is valuable information, of course, for you as a mobile team, as a mobile tester, to dig uh, deep into the log files and to see where potential problems occur. So that's why it's important to integrate those tools together with beta testing, but also with the production app, of course. So in case on production is happening, something is happening, you also get feedback in here too. Um, yeah, there are some, some nice things that you can integrate. It's a shake to send bug information or bug report. So there's a company, for example, Instabug, but as I said, there are many, many other companies out there that provide these kind of features. So you can also integrate those libraries and whenever you, for example, you shake the phone, you found an issue, a bug reporting feature um, comes up, you can make screenshots, draw on the screenshot and then send a detailed bug report to your um, development team. Um, what you also can do is you can add an entry in the app settings, for example, with a feedback channel or with a bug reporting form. So in case users don't want to shake or it's like a hidden feature for them, you have still an, an, an access point for your customers to, to report issues. A little drawback on this side is you have to make sure that this is a transparent and it's really um, easy to find for, for users because some things in settings are not that e easy to find. So that's important to make it transparent. Um, community, community communication. Um, so what's this all about? Um, whenever you establish a beta testing community or any kind of community that 
you would like to gather feedback from, it's important that you have to communicate with your beta testers or your testers at all, because it's it's really it's really important to have a connection with them, um, not only to get some information, of course, from feedback, but also to provide them with detailed information about the new app release, because this is really important to do. Then. Um, you get more detailed feedback. So for example, if you tell your beta testers, hey, um, please take a look more on the login or on the registration side of things or check the uh, feature X, Y, Z, then users can focus uh, on that area and give detailed feedback and reports on that section. And this is why you need to communicate with them in both ways, right? Um, yeah, that's what I already said initially. You have to interact with them. You have to reply to feedback being it in the Google Play Store or being it via email or any other channel that you would like to set up. And you should give guidance in case of issues, right? Tell them like, hey, okay, that's a known issue or there's a workaround. You can you can bypass the issue with tapping here and tapping there. And this is valuable information to them. And again, to have like a good relation with them. Um, on the other side, you don't, um, please don't underestimate the effort that comes with uh, community management in terms of beta testers. Depending on how many beta testers, of course, you have, this can be a full-time job or even more people can have to work on it to, to handle all the debug reports because you also need to be sure that you can reproduce the issue in case there's a bug report. You need to prioritize the reports coming in. And if there are too many things and you don't react on them, Beta testers tend to opt out and say, hey, um, my valuable time that I put into beta testing and giving feedback is not heard by the team. I can do something else in the meantime. So what are the pros and cons of beta testing community? The pros are, yeah, it's a great source of, of feedback and insights, of course. You get early feedback uh, to iterate fast and it's easy to set up. Yeah, uh, if you remember option three um, from the Google Play Console and the Google Play Store, it's just a few clicks that you have to do in order to have a beta testing community available. Then of course you have to advertise the feature a bit and then the users usually come and give feedback. And, and this is a valuable insight that you get to iterate fast. Uh, on the downside or on the con side is it requires more communication and require more work in, co in terms of community management bug management, feedback handling, what I said before. So don't underestimate the feedback that you get from your customers. It's It can be a full-time job or even more people can be involved in handling all the bug issues and reporting them to the mobile teams to, to give guidance here. So this, these are some drawbacks that I see. Okay, let's summarize uh, what I just told you about the beta testing community. Um, beta testing on Android is really easy to establish. It's really fun to do. Um, when I did it in the past, it was really nice, just a few clicks and you uh, you can do, you get easy feedback from, from beta testers. That's really cool. Um, the cool thing is that you have different options to choose from. So from option one, from internal to um, half, half internal testing with, with Google Groups and invite users, and then you have the public one. And even you can use the distribution interfaces or uh, distribution frameworks to set up some, some more sophisticated or more internal testing groups based on your requirements and needs. Um, yeah, you get early, f early and fast feedback of new app versions. And I said this like multiple times now. Um, you get valuable uh, insights things that you haven't covered before or things that you never have seen before because usually in the world uh, the nasty things are going to happen and um, on the downside as i said community handling uh, requires some additional time and this is something you have to you have to make sure that somebody is taking over this job yeah and with that um, that's it for today i hope you enjoyed the video if so uh, give me a thumb thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. I would like to, to see more uh, subscribers to my channel. This is a motivator for me. And um, if you have any kind of feedback, leave it in the comments below. Thank you and bye bye.